It takes a very interesting angle and understanding, like what the hell's going on in Rosli when the houses there are flying off the freaking shelf, Fine. aren't they? Yes. So quickly, everything is selling so quickly. I have two listings over there. Within five days, I had multiple offers on them, like way over asking. And no problem, there were so many people coming in and out. One open house had 18 people. Another open house had at least 15, maybe 18 people. It went so quickly and I was fending off offers for these properties. Yeah, so I mean, you and I have been living in the South Shore neighborhood, which Rossville is in, and then the yeah. Woodbrook Estates. So it seems like people are not moving out as much and there's a high demand, right? So what's so great yeah. about Rossville in general, in your opinion? Rossville is a really nice community. There's plenty of shopping here. You have Target, you have Woodrow Plaza, which has tons of banking, plenty of shopping, plenty of foods, the transportation. It's its really a diverse group of people that live on this side now. Everything's over here. You have Mexican food, you have Indian food, you have, you know, Italian food. You have so much to offer here. It's a really nice area here. The schools are really good here. The, the kids really interact in the schools here. They have a lot of like programs and stuff for the kids here in the school system because most parents are working you, you really have a lot going on here there's a lot of things that, for the kids to do a lot of gymnastics places out here or, you know like there's so much for these kids to do here so i moved to this neighborhood in 1999 a lot have changed like all these shopping centers that you spoke about even new schools yeah i mean things <clears throat> changed a lot i mean there's a lot of people who moved into the neighborhood and with that thank god they created all of these extra shopping malls and and things like that and activities for the children and extra schools yeah right how long have you been living in the neighborhood oh, i've been living here since 1997 or 98. oh okay yeah so just a, a bit time. over just a little bit over. Things did change, didn't they? <clears throat> yeah, they changed so much. The traffic is not so great. <laughs> but you know what? This side of the island, really, the traffic isn't bad. It's really not that bad. As long as not as during school. It's just school. <laughs> no, school. I mean, you have the school buses picking the kids up and stopping to drop them off. That's expected anywhere you go, really, now. Even, you know, Long Island, Staten Island, 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 everywhere. But, um, but really, the, the traffic isn't so bad you know, on the, on the South Shore here. So when you are interacting with buyers, mm -hmm. what are they saying that attracts them to Woodbrook Estates? They love the houses. They love the community there. There's pool there. I know, it's beautiful. I drove by the, I walked by the other day. Yeah. It's amazing. You have the park there? You have <gasps> to die for it. Yes, <laughs> they, have, they have two parks there. They have a pool and they have a kiddie pool and they have um, tennis courts, which now people are using as pickleball. Pickleball, I can't even get it out. Pickleball courts. <laughs> um, you know, they just have a lot just in that community, you know, and so much is included in, in the HOA fees over there. The HOA fee over there, it really isn't high. It's pretty reasonable for all the amenities that you get, you know. Russell also has a lot of parks in the area dog parks, parks. I mean, Staten Island has another, uh, like, <clears throat> yeah. I think at least 1,700 parks in a 21 mile crazy. long yeah. island. There's so this much to do crazy. on this side. There's so much to do on this side of the island. There really is. So the, way, the way we used to recognize that community at Woodbrook Estates is that all of the houses were like this ugly red color yes. <laughs> right but they're so pretty now i know because yeah eventually they said well you now have to replace your siding and make it look uniform and it's so pretty in there yeah. right now but i think it's important to also uh, note that there's two types of uh, ownership in woodbrook estates yeah. one is the condominium and one is the fee simple and also they have different layout so the two homes that you are getting into contract right now are they similar in layout or are they they're pretty much the same but layout. one mm -hmm. is a condo no they're both condos oh, they're both condos they're both condos there and the ones that are uh, fee simple are pretty much the ones that have a basement 
The ones that I'm listed, I have listed right now, don't have a basement. Not really, because <clears throat> the one that I have in contract is fee simple and it doesn't have a basement. Oh, okay. Learn something new every day, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just that um, they have interesting styles there. So basement is one thing. Usually, I think the condos mostly have the basements. And then they have the three-story townhouses that are yes. sitting on top of the, uh, a built-in garage. Oh, okay. And these are huge homes. They really are. They, you look at the size from the outside and they don't really appear as large as they are. And once you step inside, you're really shocked at how much space you have there. I remember the first one that I sold like that. Oh my gosh, you and I used to work in the same company when we started. This was like in 2002. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, what an ugly red house, but what a beautiful day. <laughs> and a gorgeous community. I used to say that too. I'm like, don't pay attention to the outside. The inside of the house is very large and really, really nice. So just, you know, pay attention to uh, what you're going into. Yeah. Because eventually the outside... Don't judge a book by its cover. They don't say it's, that for no reason. Exactly, right? exactly. Anyway, I think uh, it's exciting for people who are looking to sell to say, wow, with everything that's going on in the market and with, uh, with all the high interest rates, I can still sell yeah. my house with multiple offers and even over asking. So let's see, like... What was the strategy of pricing these homes when you discussed it with the seller? So let's start with Cypress Loop, right? Yes. Cypress Loop, I, uh, I listed at four ninety nine, dollars and I said, listen, I said, it's going to come in at the price that the market is going to entail it to be. If it's meant to be more, it's going to be more. People, it depends on the, the supply and demand. And right now, the supply is low and the demand is high. So if you price it right, people are going to come in. They, they just have to see your property and know what it's worth. And it is very difficult to make uh, comps there because the variety of the sold prices are ridiculously different. They're all over the place. So it's very important to use somebody <clears throat> that really understands and selling there to understand the different variations and what's going to call for one price versus another and you really want to always negotiate up you don't really want to negotiate down right you're never going to get the the outcome or the best highest price for your house if you're going to negotiate down no competition creates price increases yeah and it's always very nice to go to your homeowner and let her know that you went over what she was expecting. So. I know, and it was what, 35,000 over? No, it was 45,000 over. 45,000 over. 45,000 over. 45, over. That's awesome. Yeah. She was thrilled because I sold her that house seven years ago and she will be making about $150,000 profit on that house. So in seven years to make that kind of profit, it's amazing. She had no idea the price of that house. And when I told her, she was completely shocked. She was tickle pink, as my mother used to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but she listened to you. You yeah. went on a good number. Yeah. And that number was good enough to generate, you said, 18 people in the open 18 house? 18 people in the open and house. how many offers? Uh, we had five offers. Yeah. Five offers for... A house in a community like that, which is also a condo, condos are always in less demand than non-condo properties. Yeah. So that's extremely, extremely amazing. Yeah. And not to, I'm not trying to brag or anything, but all five offers were over asking. Yeah, because yeah. when people all know five. that they, when people know when there's other offers, of course they're going to yeah. offer more. Yeah, absolutely. You want to compete. It's the high too of winning that auction, pretty much. You know, <laughs> not that it's an auction, but it's, it's nice to win that bid, and then you, you know, really is exciting. But yeah. also, uh, let's talk about because I think it's important mm -hmm. uh, for buyers to understand right when they are involved in multiple offers situation what is important for them like i know for example 
that being pre-approved, and I know this word is like, ah, I want to puke, yeah. because I feel like <laughs> everywhere you go, this is what you hear, oh, get pre-approved, pre-approved, but really it's helping you, especially when you are looking into winning a bid in a multiple offer situation, the seller and their listing agent will be looking at all of these things and if you have multiple buyers and one buyer that actually went through the pre-approval process and i don't just mean a pre-approval -pre letter i mean you actually went through the underwriting process income verification credit verification yeah. debt to income ratio that's when you can say that you are pre-approved yeah. and in a competitive offer situation the seller relies on their realtor to say, okay, well, which offer looks like the strongest? It's not always the money. It's not always the down payment a lot of times. How did that play into this deal that we're talking about? And the particular deal that, that I handled was um, they had a good credit score. They were pre-approved, which is different from a pre-qualification, which that's going down another rabbit hole. But there is a small difference. One is income verified, they check your paperwork, they make sure your income is where it says instead of just word of mouth, like, oh, this is how much I make. So they've actually had all their income and uh, paperwork verified. They've gone through the underwriting process, as Fear was saying. So, you know, there's a difference between that. So knowing that they had pre-approval, knowing that they had the money down, their credit was good, they had steady jobs, you know, over a certain period of time, which is usually at least two years, they were able to make some compromises too, to make sure that the deal closed. They did the inspection right away because it was a little higher price. They waived the appraisal. If it does go over, they're gonna put the cash in to cover anything, which it will appraise. I did all the comps for it and it's gonna appraise for what we sold it for. Now the other home on Redwood Loop, that one is also a condo, yes. but it's, uh, slightly larger. It's actually almost the same house. Set up a little different, but it's the same house. Okay, but the square footage was a little higher, if I'm not mistaken. No, exact no? same. Yeah, exact same footage. The homeowner just modified it to his needs. He made an office in the back, which was really, really nice. It took a little bit off the dining room area, but it was just an open, useless space, pretty much. He made an office back there because during COVID, he needed an office in the house to work from home. So it's great. It was great for somebody to, you know, looking for a home office, completely separated from the rest of the, the dining room, living room. It's not a spare room upstairs. It's actually made exactly for what it is. And uh, so he had that. He has a street to street property, which is a little different. Um, just had everything redone in his kitchen. That was just all redone a few so years ago. So it was in a better condition than than Cypress Loop. Yeah, you know, they lived there a long time, so they were able to like work out all the kinks. You know what I mean? Yeah. They worked out all the kinks, they knew what they needed, and they they upgraded their house to their needs, you know? Right, but the upgrades turn out to be a higher list price and also yeah. a higher yes. sale price, yes. obviously. So that property was listed at 525. 525. And that, that's because the extra property size, right. the street to street. Right, the street to street so The that. condition, a little bit more updated, upgraded. Yes. That extra office probably helped. Abs absolutely, absolutely. So that one, you had numerous people in the I have numerous offers. That one's still on the table, so I want to talk too much about that one. We're still deciding between sellers, uh, buyers on that one. We're and, in the middle of deciding. Yeah, you know? and that's exactly what's going to drive that decision is exactly what we spoke about before, which is the pre-approval going through the underwriting department. Yes. Showing that there are funds available to cover the down payment, yes. the closing costs, and things like that. Yes. So that's what you and your seller right now are going over yes. to make sure that you pick the offer that's pretty much going to, there's no guarantees, but right. increase the chances to get the seller to the closing table. Correct. Yeah, yeah. I was just on the phone with the mortgage broker for the particular couple that we're looking at this morning, making sure they were qualified, making sure all their paperwork was in, making sure their credit was good and, you know. Yeah, I mean, as, as, yeah. as a listing agent, 
you must do this yeah. for a seller because you cannot advise you don't make the we don't make the decision no. for the seller but we need to be able to advise our client what is the offer that looks the strongest to get you to the closing table yeah i'm laughing because this morning i was talking to my seller and he said what do you think i should do and i said I'm sorry, I can't tell you that. That's up to you. All I could do is bring you the facts. I did my due diligence to check on all the information I have. And now it's up to you and your wife to make that decision. I said, you know, I, mean, I, I bring him the best offer I can with the best information that I can. And he's got to decide himself, you know, that's all you can do. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I'll be honest, there is a downside to to live this far away in the south shore i don't see it i love it <laughs> i'm here how many years i'm here 27 years i love it i love the, the downside summer. is if you need to go to work and you work in downtown manhattan oh wow. i don't know but like other than that it's it's a beautiful neighborhood well you, you could jump on the train the train takes you straight to the ferry and you, 45 minutes on the train First, you gotta get there, park your car. <laughs> so let's say it's an hour, plus 20 minutes on the ferry, plus God knows where you have to go from the ferry. That's so, true. That's, that's true. You know, but, but there are express buses, and they're right out on the street off Rossville Avenue. So there are express buses right there that take you straight into Manhattan. So there are uh, there are some plus sides too. I enjoy the side. There's shopping right over the bridge too. So. If you can't find something on Staten Island, there's a Walmart right over the bridge from here. You know, there's so much, there's so much. Over, to over the bridge to New Jersey. Yeah. yeah, over the bridge to New Jersey. That's very close to it. So you have your Walmart over there because New York doesn't have Walmart. But you got Target right, right before the bridge. There's a big, giant, brand new, like a few years old shop, right? There's so much over here. There's a movie theater. There's a library over here. There's so much over here really nice really nice programs for the kids too so we can't really not talk about all the how many years already oh the market's gonna crash the market's oh, gonna yeah. crash so i'm gonna say what i mean we wanna we wanna kind of touch on where do we think the real estate market particularly in this rossville area is going to look like well from my perspective i think i know that real estate is very much hyper local type of a thing and let's be honest when the interest rates went up we all thought that's it yeah with all these prices mm -hmm. people can't afford to buy houses anymore there was a shock in the industry on both ends the consumers and us in the real estate business yeah, definitely but then every time there's a shock people kind of shake it off yeah. <laughs> and you still, gotta, just, you still gotta live in a house Right. So, so they've been talking about this crash, crash, crash for so long. But I'm going to tell you my opinion is, my opinion is, is as long as there's demand and the demand is high and very little inventory, our inventory compared to what it used to be, like, let's say oh, yeah. 10 years ago, let, let's go this far. A healthy real estate mm -hmm. market was like 4,000 homes on the market and that's considered to be healthy. It's not a buyer's market, it's not a seller's yeah. market, it's just a healthy market. You didn't have to go nuts and all of that stuff. And then all of a sudden, now we're like barely like on averaging 1,100 to 1,200 homes available on the market at each and given time. And sometimes we'll go down to like 800, 900. So, I mean, we're a quarter of the yeah, available yeah. properties that are available <laughs> for you guys to buy. I don't see the market crashing. I mean, no. we, we're going into a little bit of a slower season soon just because of the holidays and the winter. Yeah. But it's just because the people who want to move during the summer so their kids can go to a new Sick. school those are the only people who kind of come in and, and, and leave, come in and leave. Yeah. But everything else keeps moving yeah we have sales even during christmas times we, we have sales during new years we have sales during thanksgiving i mean it's not about that so what's your take about rosa do you agree or you think oh i wish i had 10 more properties that i could sell and in that development alone i wish i had 10 more just like it 
it's it's, it's great for somebody crazy. like people who just starting out like a lot of time i talk with clients that they say well you know that's not my dream home your first house is never your dream no home. it's never your dream well mine mine turned out to be i'm there so long but yeah. um but i had room to grow so it wasn't bad you know you're not gonna find your dream home especially in the, in the prices that things are now you know you have to work your way up you start at a smaller house you save you build equity in it and then you go to your dream home or you go to the next level until you find your dream home yeah you know it, it, it kind of helps you like figure out your budget and how much you could afford when you actually buy your first house yeah and if we really think yeah. about it i mean the average median sale price on staten island is between lower 600s even 650 yeah. up to like at times 725 depending on on, yeah. on that month in the market so to go into a great option in a spectacular place yeah. that has so many things to offer and get in there under 600 which is like under the median sale price right that's like huge yeah it's a sweet spot i call it the sweet spot in the market 500 525 is a sweet spot because most that's the price that most people are looking at today you know you can't buy a house for 150,200 anymore 500 is the low end of the of yeah the a lot of times that's your down payment yeah <laughs> exactly you yeah. know the market's just it dictates itself there's nothing you could do to change it people are looking and they're gonna buy when you're ready if you're in the market at 500 come see me <laughs> and for sellers really i guess what i the message i want to relay is i support buying a house or selling a house when you need to do that yeah. for a specific need if the time is difficult because of how the market is doing and what the interest rates are or what the next yeah. available properties that you have for you is interfering with your moving on or up or down or away but if you don't have a real need to do it then don't do it but if you do have a need don't look at these things like i hear a lot of people and I'm, <laughs> we hear people say oh well it's better to sell in the spring or it's better no. no it's not it's never better to sell or buy in any kind of season yeah. and you're ready it's when you're ready or when you need to yeah it is unfortunate though that sometimes people say well i don't have nothing to buy because there's not enough inventory but you know what i'm gonna say something that it's gonna be really difficult to just kind of believe and roll with it but every time we sell a house that that seller now also needs to buy a house mm -hmm. and the house is never there it's not available it's not ready and then the minute they get into contract with them secure a buyer when we secure a buyer for their house all of a sudden that house is there yep <laughs> Magic. It's unexplainable, but the house that you are looking for will be there when the time is right. There's new stuff coming on the market every single day. I have a lot of my my buyers set up with automatic searches. So anything new that comes on the market automatically goes to them and they see it right away. And then we get in there and show it to them so they can see it right away. But there's new stuff coming on every day. People see the prices that and the way the market is, and they're ready to sell, and they're not afraid, you know? Just gotta get over that fear. You gotta make the jump when, when it's your time. Yeah, you for know? sure. So anyway, I think it's important to let you guys know whether you're a buyer that's looking to buy there, or you're a seller that's contemplating, just reach out, and I'll have Carol's information in the description, and reach out, and it doesn't really cost you anything to have a consultation yeah. and really figure out is it working is it something that's that that is going to work for you yeah or it's not that's really the key i find it that when i sit down with clients sometimes when i get to learn about the entire situation there's times that i will tell them look if you don't really have to sell now don't <laughs> yeah you know but there's a lot of people who have a need to sell and sometimes they focus on what am I losing versus what am I gaining yeah. but you're really not gonna know you need to have the whole picture from your own understanding and the professional experience perspective where the whole picture can come together and you can make a decision so I hope this was helpful make sure to like subscribe give us a call reach out text call email whichever way comment below 
Thanks so much and I will see you on the next video.